Okay, so we're going to solve some radical equations. We've talked about uh, solving proportions, but what happens when something's not a proportion? So before we even start with anything radical, I just want to quickly review other things that we've already solved, other types of functions. Okay, so the first one is a linear function. Uh, this is very straightforward. You can see x is all by itself. Right? And if we wanted to solve something that looks like this, uh, our job is to get that x alone by uh, undoing all the operations that are on the same side. So in this case, I'd say let's subtract the 10 on both sides and I get that alone. And then after that, I, I always want to undo multiplication after addition and subtraction. Okay, so I want to divide by 3. So in this case, I would say x is equal to 10. Okay, and I did that by getting x alone on its side of the equation. Okay. We've also solved uh, absolute value functions. Remember, these are a V-shape when we graph them. Right? And so if I were to say, what, what do we want to isolate now? We're not just going to isolate x by itself. Our first job is going to be to isolate the entire absolute value. Since this is an absolute value function, we want to isolate absolute value. So to do that, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say, let's add 20 to both sides. Undo the addition and subtraction. right? And then after we get that gone, we're going to say, well, this is being multiplied by the 70 over here. All right, so I'm going to divide away the 2. Okay, we can't distribute into an absolute value. So now I have the absolute value function by itself. And then we have a special way of dealing with this. We said absolute value uh, could be positive or negative inside of this bar to give me a positive 35. And so we wrote two functions from that. And we said, well, x plus 4, that number inside, the absolute value could be 35, okay, because the absolute value of 35 is 35. Or x plus 4 could be equal to negative 35, because the absolute value of negative 35 is also positive 35. All right, so for this one, I get a 31. And when I do this, the negative version, I get a negative 39. Right? So I got my two answers. But the big idea here was the function was absolute value. And so we out, first we isolated the absolute value, and then we had to do something to finish the problem. Okay? Here's the last one that we've done. Uh, we also did quadratics. Okay? So in this case, if I were to say, well, what is the function? The function is squaring, and so this entire expression is what I want to isolate. Okay? So again, you can see I have a 3 and a 4 on the outside that got to go. So we're going to add 3, okay? undo the addition and subtraction. Okay? That gets us to 4 times the squared expression. We'll put the 5 in there. Okay. That equals 36. Okay. So again, just like we did up here, this was 2 times. This is 4 times. I'm going to divide away. Okay. Do its opposite. Okay. And so this now becomes x plus 5 squared is equal to 9. Okay. So now that I have the, the function, which is squaring, isolated, I can square root in this case to get rid of it. And I get to uh, Two solution or two equations again. X plus five could be equal to three, or x plus five could be equal to negative three, and then we'd solve. Right. So when I subtract five on both sides here, I get a negative two, and when I subtract five on both sides in the second equation, I get a negative eight. Okay. Negative eight. Okay. So I have my two solutions. But again, let's take a look at what the big idea here is. The big idea is that in the first function, I just had to get x alone. In the second problem, the function was the absolute value, so I wanted to get that alone. In the third function, it was squaring, so I want to get that alone. All right, so let's apply that idea about isolating the function to radical expressions. So if you take a look here, I have a, a square root of x plus 7 is equal to 16. So again, if we're applying that same idea, I'd say the square root of x is the function and uh, all this other stuff is just on the outside of that function. So I want to get rid of, in this case, the minus 7, or I'm sorry, the plus 7 by doing minus 7 on both sides. And I'll get the square root of x is equal to 16 minus 7, well, that'll be 9. All right, so now I'm going to square both sides okay, to get rid of the square root. So I'd say the square root of x squared is equal to 9 squared. Okay, and this is we do this because the opposite of square rooting is squaring. They're opposites of each other, so they'll cancel out. And I'll just be left with x. In this case, x is equal to 81. Okay, and so if you check your answer here, and I plug the 81 back in, this really says the square root of 81, which is 9. 9 plus 7, well, that's 16. And that's giving us our correct answer. Okay, so the second problem, we have the same idea. So if I were to uh, highlight my function, I'd say the square root of x. There it is again. 
right? And in this case, I just have an extra that says 2 times the square root of x plus 6, right? So I'm going to say let's subtract the 6, undo addition and subtraction, and that looks like 2 times the square root of x is equal to 14 minus 6 would give me 8. To get rid of the 2, I'm going to divide, okay? So now it looks like, okay, the square root of x is equal to 4. And then to get rid of the square root of x, I'm going to square both sides. So let's square the square root of x, and let's square 4. And that makes x equal to 16. Okay? So again, if I check that, the square root of 16 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 6, that does give me 14. Okay? So here's my last one. So if I was looking at this one, if you notice up here, the only thing that was under the radical was x. In this case, under the radical here, I have this entire 4y minus 5. So if I were to say, what is the function? Yeah, I'd say this entire thing is underneath the function. So if I were to look at the left-hand side of this radical, there's nothing outside of that uh, square root symbol. So I can actually, in this case, square right away. So I'm going to take this entire expression and square, okay? and then I'm also going to take the 10 and square. So I'm going to say 4y minus 5 is equal to 100, and now I actually have to keep going. So in these cases, after I squared, x was alone, so I was finished. In this case, after I squared, there's more under the radical, so now I need to add 5 to both sides. Okay. Well, that means that 4y is equal to 105. And then in this case, I'm going to get a, a fraction out of the answer. Right? So when I divide both sides by 4, divide by 4, it looks like y is equal to okay, uh, 4 into 10 goes 2 times, with 2 left over, so 26.5. Okay, so I'd say my final answer is 26.25, and that's an acceptable answer as well. So if you go up here and you plug in 26.25 and you square do all the, the math on the inside, square root, you're going to actually get a 10 back. Okay, so the idea of all these is exactly the same. We're trying to get the radical alone on the side that has the radical, and then we're going to square away the radical, and then in some cases, like this one, when there's extra stuff under the radical, you're going to have to move all that stuff over as well.